Sammy Guevara defeated in the finals of Super Indy 13 when RJ City procured the uh, spray paint of Facade, sprayed it in the eyes of Sammy, and these are the two men. Well, now hold it, who are you blaming there, Facade or RJ City? Well, it was RJ City that used the object. Well, he brought the object, Facade did. I mean, come on. He, I noticed you don't like RJ City. I don't, because he tries to uh, uh, completely destroy the, the fabric of Super Indy that we built. This is about being objective, Joe. You can learn a lesson from me, always objective. Except maybe with DD Me once in a while. Yeah, objective and Mark Madden, same sentence here at IWCK's Fury. Taven and Guevara to start out. Every two minutes, another man will enter until we reach four. At this point, at that point, I should say, it's escape the cage rules. Taven's had a great career to this point. As you know, Joey's done some great work in Ring of Honor. But he has to keep his foot on the accelerator. Young guys, they get to a certain point, they've got to be careful they don't slow down. Be careful they don't take a step backwards. Taven, the longest reigning Ring of Honor television champion in history, some 287 days, I do believe, would love to attempt to duplicate that feat with the Super Indy Championship. Anything that he can win that he's had an opportunity to win, Matt Taven has won. And wait a second, Gabar trying to turn things around. Each man in this matchup, a 25% chance of winning. Uh, I know Guevara and Taven do have experience good, in the steel. Good figure in math, Major. <laughs> and it's Taven now. Guevara lands on his feet. Nicely done. But caught on the rebound. Now, see, here's where Taven should move in. Don't do the finger waggle, young man. Follow up. Follow up. That's the key to victory, Joe, following up. That is true, but keep in mind you can't win until all four men have entered the match. That doesn't mean you can't punish him. And Guevara puts the brakes on. Taven as well. Check the cage, Jake. What a tall cage this is, Joe. Yeah. It's I, the tallest cage I've ever seen. And this isn't a uh, a million dollar uh, well-produced cage. This has jagged edges and has steel pieces that can dig into your spine, dig into your entire body. Here comes Andrew Palace, the STD. An explosion of popularity has gone the way of Andrew Palace in recent months. Now you see, there's Guevara making a rookie mistake. He tried to climb the cage, put himself in the tree, and whoa, no reason to climb the cage yet, Joe. That is true, and Andrew Palace just explodes, and you gotta believe the other STDs in the back watching on, Palace could make a major, major stride towards singles glory, but Guevara shuts there, Palace down. There are plenty of STDs in the back, Joe. I know that for a fact. I love this palace. What fire. The proverbial baby face fire. He has got it all going on tonight here at Cage Fury. Watch Taven. Taven with a somersault sent on. And Mark, I think the name of the game is take out the opposition before the fourth man comes in. You see this a lot in a three-way, four-way, however many-way cage match. A lot of guys on the ground trying to recover. And the fourth guy in is going to have a bit of an edge, at least early on. Yeah, it's that luck of the draw. Of course, these men, uh, a randomly selected draw. That's it. That's the Guevara's laying him in there. That's what I want to see. Ah, oh, you appreciate the aggression, I see. Well, all four of these men have to uh, be prepared to do anything it takes to win. But also, all four of these men do have a mutual respect for one another that you got to believe will... Nah, see, I don't like that. You don't like respect. Mutual respect never won a match. Well, that's true. And you got to believe that as this cage match progresses, that will begin to melt away. I'll tell you what, pre-game, I picked Facade to win this match. Okay. But if Guevara is willing to go up to the line and maybe go over a little bit, he could very easily emerge victorious. I like what we've seen so far from this guy tonight. And now the final entry. Three-time former Super Indy champion. The Super Indy Samurai, the Neon Ninja, the Aerosol Assassin. The man who's been robbed of maybe more title opportunities than anyone else. The fans love him. I love him too, boy. He is one of wrestling's next big things. I see it. Masada's history with Guevara. They've met one-on-one. -on -one. They met in the Super Indy Finals. And now they meet inside the steel. And it's Taven and Sammy 
on the receiving end as Palos down the corner. Check out the agility. So nimble, so quick on his feet. Wow! Wow, that shows the best offense is a good defense. He got out of the way and then put Haven on his back. Mixed for Sparth for Prasad. I think all four of these men have a legitimate claim to the next title shot. A very split crowd here tonight at court time. Fasad has just set this match on fire. And Fasad, I'm not sure if he was going high risk or looking to escape, because you can win this matchup now. All men have entered. Well, now with all four guys in, Joe, we see what alliances might spring up. Gee! Fasad doing some springing up of his own. Cave Rana takes out two for the price of one. It shows the edge the fourth guy coming in is going to have, especially when it's a major town like Fasad. Oh, here we go. Here we go. These two guys right up in the grill, baby. And this is a match a lot of fans have been waiting to see. Some say Palace has replaced Fasad as the most popular in the Super Indy division. Boy, that's a pretty tall order. I don't know if it's true. What do you think, Joe? I think you can make a case for it. I think it's a pretty 50-50 here tonight. Palace made his presence known at the end of Super Indy 13, helped run RJ City out of town that night. And Taven and Sammy both taste the steel. Boy, I'll tell you what, a little more acceleration. That cage might come tumbling down with somebody falling through it, Joe. And you talk about those strange bedfellows, those odd alliances. Basad and Palace working together. It won't last. And both men on the other side now. Cage a little jagged. I like it a little saggy. I like a little danger, Joe. This is my kind of cage match. Yeah. No, uh, pretty blue bars here in IWC. Sammy tries to counter out of that neck breaker. Palace drives him straight down to the canvas. Facade involved as well, making sure Sammy uh, doesn't get out of harm's way. Watch Taven! Missile drop kick both men down. I'm not cutting anybody out, Joe, but right now Guevara looks a little bit overwhelmed by the situation, doesn't he? I don't think Sammy Guevara's been in a big match situation quite like this. Not this big. Not in the least. He's had some big matches down in Texas where he resides. Taven's had some big matches as well. Ring of Honor Television Championships, main events. Taven has struggled since leaving the House of Truth and Truth Martini in Ring of Honor. Oh my God, that's the best thing he could have done. The guy tries to do every gimmick at once, Truth Martini. He was, he's worse than Paige. Squatting Samoan drop by Sammy Guevara. And a twisting suplex for Prasad and Sammy starting to get back in the game. All four of these guys looking just tremendous right now and no sooner did they say Guevara looked overwhelmed, he's overwhelming now. Found his opportunity. Found that second burst of adrenaline. And all three opponents struggling. And just breaking down into a brawl now. The Son and Palace, boy, they always seem to wind up working together, don't they? They do, certainly. They know each other well, they travel the same roads, but it's Sammy. That double, sliced bread number two neutralizes both adversaries. Hey, bro, get Yeah, I, I, when that alliance breaks down between Palace and Facade, that could well decide this match, Joe. Yeah, and there is a lot of... And it will, believe me, it will. A lot of competitive spirit in an ordinary situation. Competitive jealousy, perhaps, between those two men. Add in the cage, add in the stakes, add in Guevara and Taven. And a stalemate. This is no time to rest, guys. There we go. Well, it's such a difficult question to answer. What's it going to take to neutralize three men at once long enough to climb a cage without risking injury? You see, that's where Guevara's youth and relative and experience showed. He went from corner to corner pulling variations of the same offense. And eventually, Taven was waiting for him. Taven drills Palace and drills Fasan. It's a super kick party at IWC. Yeah, he is awesome with the super kick. Just incredible. Jeez. The accuracy. Oh! Absolutely off the page. Sammy responds in kind. See? Guevara thought two moves ahead. It's worth noting too, Joe, with the cage as tall as it is, you will have to really incapacitate your opponents to make good your escape. 
Oh, absolutely. And the door. The door looks like it's easy. It's not. It's always tough to get out that way. Yeah. So much more easier to grab onto somebody, pull them back into the fight. And Sammy going to make the climb. Palace. Desperation interrupts the young 22-year-old. Look at that. I mean, he's up there. He has an opportunity, but this cage is so big. And we're right back where we started. No clear-cut advantage. Yeah. And, and, and as the match gets older, Joe, fatigue is going to be the primary factor. And right now, I really don't know who has the most left in the tank. What's your call? Well, Fasad has shown his endurance in the past. He's made it to the finals of three state Super Indy tournaments. You got to give the advantage in big match Super Indy situations on paper to Fasad, but Palace has risen meteoric like in 2014. Yeah, he's really seized the day here. Interesting quote. Oh! Head first. Oh, that was just, oh my God, that a German. He is taking these guys apart right now. Terry Funk once told me that a minute in a cage is like five minutes in a regular match in terms of exertion. Yeah, we're over 10 minutes deep in this match now. There you go. And Palace drops Taven. If he can get up there in a hurry, ain't none of these guys gonna stop him anytime soon, Joe. I believe that was Palace's hernia driver. That does a lot of damage. It could be the opportunity for the goggled one. See now here, in, in, a, in a WWE style cage, you know, you'd be almost out. You gotta exert so much effort, even when you're at the top turnbuckle, Joe. This is gonna, we're not going anywhere for a while. Yeah, and so many moving parts as well. Facade, able to catch up the palace. And you can hear the impact of this exchange. Facade has battled in cages before. He has bled in cages before to fight for what he believes in. Well, somebody's going to bleed here before too long unless I miss my guess. Facade, the only man with experience in an IWC cage in this match. Oh, Side suplex from way up high. This is amazing. What's great about all four guys, Joe, they're great competitors. Technically, they're great. They all look the part. Everybody in there is a pretty complete performer. Final fight, Arash Kage driver by Fasan. What, what's that called? Arash Kage driver. Oh, for the love of God. Japan influence can't help you much beyond that, Mark. I think I have, uh, I saw Giant Baba wrestle once. Okay, that, that counts as something. I was waiting for the Young Dragons reference. We'll move on. I'm not even sure they were really Asian. Well, tell Jimmy Yang you said hi. See, That's Hayden. Facade now. He's in trouble. Oh, no. Oh, wait, no. Maybe Jeez. he's in trouble. Got something to keep your eye on there. When Facade came down, he caught his knee. He landed funny. His left knee might be in trouble despite the amount of punishment he gave Matt Taven. What a mid-air adjustment. Taven planted. But you're right, Mark, at what cost of the knee on Ninja, who certainly, with years of his ring style, has got to have beat up knees as it is. Yeah, now he's modified that a little bit. He works a little more economically now. I think he saved his body some wear and tear in the last year or so. But in a four-way cage match, there ain't no saving something. I mean, you're chasing that Super Indy Championship. That title you've held three times before. There's not much you won't do to get to that mountaintop. And Fassad takes that title very personally. He considers that a possession, and right now he don't got it. He considers it stolen. Yeah, Fassad with the embodiment of the courage, the honor, the valor of Super Indy. And Fassad now, he's halfway home. No one else has made it this close, but Palace. Grabbing onto whatever he can. It's gonna be tough to swing that right leg over as long as Palace is holding on. Oh, he's here we go, it. here we go. He's got it. Dallas has a, a handful of dreads. Wait a minute. Chest flexor. The STDs are here. Well, you had to know that was going to happen sooner, not later, Joe. The STDs running interference for Palos. And there's no DQ here, correct? There is no disqualification. And Facade finds himself trapped. 
We'll now see Fasad should drop down and win the match, but it looks to me like he's going back in to fight someone. If he dropped, he dropped into a shark pit. Yeah, but he wins. Touche. Oh my god. Fasad's on top of this cage. And there's no telling what he'll do from here. He's walking the cage! Illustrious career, Joe. That's one of the greatest moves I've ever seen. To walk that cage at that height, land with that impact, just incredible. Memo to the three other guys. Don't all stand near each other. STDs escorted out by officials. Fasad has his opportunity to get through the door. Fasad. He did it. Fasad has won! Fasad has escaped! Fasad gets his opportunity! And now Sammy... I haven't heard a bell yet. Where's the ref? The referee... The referee took STD back to the... Back to the dressing room. And, and the referee saw... The referee saw Sammy! Wait a second, wait, let's get a decision here. Facades on the far side celebrating. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner. And the number one contender to the Super Indy Championship.